All right. So let's take a look at the basics. We've got a new set of numbers, the complex numbers. So the first thing we're going to want to do with these complex numbers is figure out, well, how do we add, subtract, multiply, and divide these numbers? How do we do basic arithmetic with complex numbers? So keeping in mind that our kind of fundamental, com one of our fundamental complex numbers is the square root of minus 1, which we're defining to be, you know, we're just coming up with a name for this and saying the name for square root of negative 1 is going to be i, and we're going to call this a number. So complex numbers, the form of complex numbers look like something plus something times i. This is the form of a complex number. It has a real part and it has an what's called an imaginary part. The real part is the thing without the eye. The imaginary part is the thing with the eye. So, it turns out, before we even get to you know, something like addition or subtraction, we need to talk about what does it mean for two complex numbers to be equal to each other. So, for example, on problem two, on page 49, they say that x and y are real numbers and find out the values for x and y given that we have these two complex numbers. Well, in order for two complex numbers to be equal, the real parts must be equal So in other words, here are the two real parts, 6 and 7. So if these two complex numbers are equal, then x has got to be equal to 7. The real parts have to be equal. And then the imaginary parts, I put a line over those to distinguish those, the imaginary parts have got to be equal. So we have to have that, you know, if we forget about the i's for a second, 2 or minus 2, negative comes with it, equals y. This is saying that the imaginary parts must be equal. So if these two complex numbers are equal, then x has to be 7 and y has to be negative 2. So that's simply our answer. In order for complex numbers to be equal, x has to be 7 and y has to be equal to minus 2. So now that we know what equals means in complex numbers, namely that two complex numbers are equal if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. Now we can talk about what does it mean to add two complex numbers. Well, put simply, it just couldn't be easier. It's exactly what you want it to be. So if we look at 8, minus 2, minus 3i, plus minus 3, minus 2i. We're going to add like terms. And the first pair of like terms is going to be minus, minus 2 
and minus 3. So we're going to add minus 2 together with minus 3. And then the other like terms are the things with the i's. That's going to be minus 3i plus a minus 2i. I have a nasty habit of dropping the dots on top of my eyes. Um, so don't let that confuse you. Minus 2 plus minus 3 is a minus 5. Minus 3i plus minus 2i minus 3 of something plus minus 2 of something is just minus 5 of that something. And then rather than saying plus minus 5, we just say simply minus 5i. So in other words, to add up two complex numbers, you just add their real parts and add their imaginary parts. This is exactly analogous. So it's not exactly the same thing, but it's, you know, so similar, it's damn near the same thing. To saying, well, don't think about it as i, just think about it as a variable. Think about it as a variable x. How would you solve this? Well, the two like terms are 3 minus 2 and minus 3. And the other pair of like terms are minus 3x minus 2x. And you compute this as minus 3x plus minus 2x is a minus 5x. Well, that's the same thing we were doing up here. So addition and subtraction, you, know, you can really forget about what i means. Just think about it as another variable and operate that way. You'll get the correct answer. But if you prefer formulas, then the formula is that when you have a complex number a plus b times i and you add it to another complex number, c plus d times i, your result is a complex number whose real part is the sum of the real parts, a and c, so a plus c, and the imaginary part of the result is just the sum of the imaginary terms, b plus d times i. So if you prefer formulas, and prefer memorizing formulas, this is the formula for addition. But personally, I just like to do it. I don't really memorize the formula. I just do it this way. But if that's not your style, don't worry about it. If you prefer memorizing, that's perfectly fine. And subtracting works basically just the same way, because addition is basically the same thing as subtraction. They're very closely related. So you take the difference between the real parts, a minus c, and then take the difference of the imaginary parts, b minus d, and then slap an i on the end of that imaginary part. So these are the two rules for addition and subtraction of complex numbers.